Hey guys, it's Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art, and today we're going to be making paper flower vases. And I don't have one to show you because I put them all in the gift shop yesterday, but I will put some together for you and show you what I was making to sell in our hometown little gift shop that I have a little area set up in. And um, these seem to be pretty popular, and especially this is really great for Valentine's Day. You can make these little flower vases for a wedding, um, you know, on the tables, or for any church function, or really any functions. If we can get back together and have those at some point, I'm sure we will. So um, the projects, or the products that I'm using today are mostly current, and I did take a trip to the dollar store and the craft store also. So um, let me turn you down to the table so you can see what I'm making. And I'm kind of in a rush, so I'm trying to finish before the kids get off the bus. I got a little bit of a late start today. So let me turn you down and uh, we'll make one mini vase and one a little bit larger. It's not a large vase, but it will be easy to put together. So let's get stamping. I'll turn you down. Um, close your eyes if you get a little seasick or anything. Just a moment. I'm getting better at this turning everything. Good morning, Julie. Nice to see you. Oh, let me get it tight so it doesn't rock on us. And I'm going to scoot this closer. See, like my messy desk right now. I was just putting together the little pieces of it. Okay, so we've got a bunch of different stuff. Let me clear off and start at the beginning. Okay, so what we're going to be using today is this Daisy Punch. And I love this punch. This came out a couple of years ago and it's still in the catalog and I love it. So this one, and they um, came out with this one not too long ago. So I thought we, we'll just use those together. You don't need to have both of them, but I did throw in a little baby Daisy for my vase because I just thought it was so cute. I'd never done that before and I just happened to bring it along with me to the gift shop yesterday and it turned out really cute. So I'll use both of those. Um, the back side of the, the flower, you know, the green part that connects to the stem, um, I'm, I'm going to use this little flower punch. And you can use any uh, little flowery type of punch that you have. I had been using this one actually. This is an old punch and I was using this piece right here. You could use our other old flower punch that's very similar to the current one that we have. That would work too. And we also have this strawberry punch and it has this tiny baby flower and I'm going to be using that one for the little one. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm also going to use a half circle punch. And this is just for the centers of the daisies. We don't sell this anymore, um, but you can get a half circle punch anywhere. You probably already have one. So let me just scoot these to the side for a minute. And we are also using some floral stem wire. This is one I think I got it at one of the big box craft stores. I want to say Michael's maybe. I don't remember. Hey, Becky. And um, this is a 20 gauge. I did get a different kind before and it was too thin. So I liked how this one was kind of thicker. It's kind of got, it's not just wire. It's wrapped with some, uh, I don't know, like fabric, I guess, like a string around it. It does unwind sometimes, but it's not a big deal because we're going to be hiding both of the cut ends. So they do come pretty long. These are 18 inches long. And so we're going to be using wire cutters to cut these. And I get two stems from one of these long stems. So I'll take one of those out. So yes, I'll be using some wire cutters. I just grabbed these from the garage. Um, I don't know what kind they are or whatever, but some old wire cutters and they still work just fine. So I'm going to find the center and then go a little bit off center because I want one a little bit longer and one a little bit shorter. So my daisies are staggered in my vase a little bit and that creates a little bit more interest and depth in our flowers so you see these are two different heights i'm going to take another tool i can find it where did it go oh right here and this is just um, some jewelry pliers uh, just anything to kind of grab the wire and bend it to make it a little easier i'm just going to grab the end of it 
just like this. Bend it down. So now it's a little bit of a loop like that. And then I'm gonna take that whole piece just like this and then twist it so that it's flat like that. And this is providing a nice base for our flower to sit on. So I'm gonna do that to this one too. And we're gonna put five flowers in our larger, larger vase. And we're gonna put one in the mini one. So that's how to start your flowers there. And I've got a bunch of other ones already done. So we're just gonna get all those out and ready. The other thing that I grabbed at Walmart was this fake flower bundle called Daisy Bush. It was $2, and what I'm using this for is really all of the green parts here. I thought it was really simple to, I could make paper leaves, but I decided this was easier. <laughs> so I took the easy way out, and they, they just provide a nice different kind of texture in the flowers. So I... Um, just snipped those off at the base of each of those stems here. Just snipped all of them off and just slid these off. So these are ready and the perfect size to just slip one of these stems right in the center. So I've got a whole bunch of those ready to go. I think with this $2 bunch, I got 18 of these little leafy bits. So that was nice. So I took my largest daisy punch and I punched a bunch of these in just plain white. I didn't do any stamping, just punched in white. And you can really fit a lot on your paper. Let me show you what I just, I just did this like a minute ago. But you can, you don't have to, you know, you can stagger them so that they really nestle in just like a puzzle and really make use of your paper. And then I would cut all of this away in order to get to the middle. And I would probably be able to get two more flowers in between these two. So you can make good use of your punch and puzzling <laughs> skills. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of punched out white flowers, right? So I punched out some of the little ones and some of the big ones. And now we want to round, kind of give them some life and round the petals. So I took my bone folder, just a simple tool, another necessary thing for folding cards. And I just gently tugged on each of the petals while pulling down and away. And it gives us this nice rounded petal. Yeah, Becky says, messy desks mean I was having fun. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I must always be having fun because <laughs> my desk is always messy. So if you pull too hard, you're going to rip a petal off. So you just want to be careful. Once it's rounded like this, I like to just bend them up at the base. And this just really makes it come to life. So I have a whole bunch of these already ready to go. I'll go ahead and do these four that are in front of me. All right, we got this one. I'm just gonna bend it up like that. And these baby ones, you gotta be a little bit even more gentle because the attachment to the center is really thin. So just really slow. Gently bend those petals and bring them to life. Bending up. Oh, my dog's drinking some water. Okay, so we've got all our little flowers and let's put them together. What I did for the center was I took a piece of Daffodil Delight uh, cardstock and I used my half inch circle punch to punch out some uh, sponged, uh, let's see what color is this? Early espresso ink. I sponged some early espresso ink on there and got some flower centers. I also have this older set called Daisy Delight. This one is not available anymore, but it has this wonderful center piece uh, for your daisies. And I, ha I do have a bunch of those ready, so I'll probably just be using those. But you can definitely get away with just sponging your cardstock and punching that out. And that's this is what that looks like. I already had a couple of these other ones ready. So this is what the stamp looks like. 
Very similar. All right, so we're just gonna be using the stamped ones since I have those ready already. And I have a few of the little daisies ready. So each of these flowers takes two of the punches and then we put the center up on dimensionals. So let's put together a few more. I'm gonna get my Tombow liquid glue out and just attach the two flowers together. Just a little dab in the middle and then offset the petals like that. And this doesn't take long to dry. And we'll take one of these and put a dimensional on it. Oop, throwing stuff. It's white cardstock, Julie. So it's not like copy paper. This is a little thicker, so it will hold up better. I didn't use the thick cardstock, and that would be interesting to try. All right, we'll put the center here. Aren't those cute? So the center on the little one is the same size as the big one. I just think it looks like a little kid trying on its mom's pumps. <laughs> it's like, I want to be a big flower too. I <laughs> just thought it was cute. So we'll put a few more of these bigger ones together and then we'll make two vases. So just sticking the flowers together and putting these on dimensionals. They come together really fast, especially if you have all these pieces out and ready already. There, see, we've got two flowers done already. And it doesn't matter if they kind of shift a little bit. Daisies aren't perfect, so if you have a wonky flower, it probably makes it more look more realistic, right? Okay, so we got... Let's make two more big flowers after this one. So I want five flowers in my big vase and one largest one for the little one. I'll show you where I got my jars too. I got them at the dollar store yesterday. So they definitely are still available at Dollar Tree is where I went to get mine. Um, sometimes they don't have them available. So I often stop at the Dollar Tree and check out what's what's there and what's not and if they have something that I've been looking for I'll buy a whole bunch of them okay one more and a center I gotta hurry because the kids are gonna get off the bus in about 10 minutes. Okay, so we've got our five flowers and we've got all our stems and I did punch out a bunch of these little uh, flower shapes in Mossy Meadow, which I think matches the stems really well. I wanted to match that. The, the leaf is pretty close too, actually. Okay, so with these leaves, what I do is I, let me push some things to the side because I'm running out of room here. Okay, so I take my scissors and I snip up to the middle from one of the uh, dips in the petals. So I snip up to the middle because I want my stem to have a place to go. And I'm going to run some uh, Seal Plus along that line and into the opposite petal. I don't know if you can see that just like that and if anything's hanging over I just kind of push it in so now I have this opening right here and I'm going to put my little bent piece kind of in that part where I cut and place the curved end onto that sticky part so now you can see that it's mostly coming out of the center of this now so now it's centered and it is sturdy enough on there where um, it's got some place to sit hopefully that's visible in here now what i'm going to do is take my liquid glue and just dab it on the center and each petal 
and then just turn one of my flowers over and hold this for about 15 seconds. I just really want this to adhere and not uh, shift at all. I want it to be really stuck on there so that somebody's flowers don't fall apart. That should be good. So it's on there really good, and now my flower is put together. It's hard to tell because I can't put it up because the stem is so long. What I want to do to give this a little bit more life is kind of foof up the petals a little bit, and that gives it a little bit more visual interest. Hopefully you can see that. It's hard to do because okay, I'm just going to bend it. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to bend it back straight. And now I can put one of these little leafy bits on there. And that's going to go sit in my vase. I'm going to put this to the side. We're going to put a, together a couple more of the flowers. And then I'll show you what they look like inside the vase. Cut up. Ooh, let's do one of the little ones and see how that works. I've not done it with this little tiny piece yet. I'm going to take one of the shorter ones. Let's see. Probably this one. That'll work. <clears throat> okay, so opposite the slit, I want to start putting this seal plus fold it in if it overhangs a little bit stick it in the groove there press it down get some liquid glue on there I love how this liquid glue dries so fast it's but not so fast where I can't like maneuver and give it a good placement so we've got Couple seconds really pushing this down. And then foof up our flowers. Oh, it's so cute. Up until yesterday, I hadn't made a baby one like this, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, so let's do the bigger ones again. One, two, three, we're just gonna knock all these out, four. And I only need one of the baby ones, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. We're just gonna seal plus all of these at once, cause that seems efficient, right? Fold that. Here's my slit, and I'm gonna go on the opposite side. Oh, I was really off center there. No worries. Fold it. Don't need that one. Okay, yeah, we only need four more, right? Okay, so now I want this taller one. Just wanna vary the heights. And I can always snip a little bit off the ends if one of them feels like it's too long. Fuff up my petals. Fuff's an official word, right? <laughs> All right, so we want to do... And you see how the green stuff's coming off? It's okay. That's all going to hide underneath this flower, so no big deal. Once you have your flowers on and in the vases, you can even tip them because of this is a wire. You can tip the flowers to kind of face the way that you want. So that's nice. All right, I wanna make two more. I'm just gonna pick some of the longer ones because I can always trim more off the end. All right, so shove that in there without ripping the flower. 
What is this bottom of the flower called? The, the green part of the, it's not the stem, it's not really a, a leaf. I guess it kind of is a leaf. It's probably got an official name, I just don't know what it is. Give that a press and one more. I probably should have pre-made a couple of these, but I was running out of time and I just figured, well, just start the video and we'll just get going. Because I could prep all day and then not get a video made. And what, what's the fun of that? Because then you couldn't see what I was making. And I said I was going to make a video, so I better do it. <laughs> okay, last one. I'll have to move the camera up a little bit so you can see what the flower looks like in the faces. Okay, so now we just need to put a little bit more leaves on and I I do skip one of the flowers and not put the leafy bits on all of them. So I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a little full. So here's the jars that I got from the Dollar Tree. I got these little salt and pepper shakers. They come in a set of two, only a dollar great deal and it's got all of these little holes in here perfect for sticking a flower stem into and then I also got these jars right here again just a dollar um, little kind of smaller size vases and the other thing I got at the Dollar Tree was this reindeer moss and I just stuck a little bit of that down in the bottom of the jar so I have a package already open and it comes a little chunky, so I'm just gonna kind of rip it a little bit to get it in there. Just put a little bit in each of these jars. I'm trying to do this fast, so I'm really making a mess. I was trying to be careful when I was making it before, but we're just gonna have fun here. Rip it and make a mess. Okay, so I don't wanna fill it up all the way, but I wanna give it a good amount of color in the bottle, and a little bit more. All right, that looks good. We'll put the lid on that one and set it aside. And now, the nice thing about this project is it's another quick project that you don't need to stamp with. Um, you hardly even need any ink. You could probably just use yellow centers for the flowers or maybe even brown or just do rainbow flowers just make it fun and have white centers that might be fun let's shove this in the neck of this is a little narrow so i do have to find a pen to push it down i don't want to do too much at once because i don't want it to get all bunched together let me find a pen here oh here's a pencil push that in I'm making a mess, aren't I? <laughs> Guys, any second they're gonna come off the bus. <laughs> ah. Okay. All right, this one I didn't wanna go up as far as the other one. I just wanted to keep it kind of in this larger section at the bottom. But we'd have to have room enough for all the stems to fit in here too. That looks good. Okay. Oh my goodness, I made such a mess. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> okay, so we've got our two jars, and we've got one of our flowers that has the stem on it, or the, sorry, the leaves. So let's just shove that on a bunch of other ones. Here's the little baby guy, and that's gonna be going in this jar. Oh, so cute, right? Oh my goodness. So we're gonna stick couple of these in here stick one in without leaves so I think it's it gets to be Wow, oh, this is really close to the camera isn't it I think it's full enough to where you don't need it on every flower okay we got this done on this one I'm gonna push the, the leaves up a little bit higher on that one and then let's see. Oh, that's cute. I'm gonna cut this flower to be shorter, just a smidge. And I'm gonna tilt 
this so that when you view it, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see like that. Oh, there's the bus. Okay, so what I would do with this is just tie a nice bow around the top here, put a glue dot on both sides so that the bow doesn't untie or move, and then that one is good to go. So I thought that this ribbon right here would be pretty on it. This one is still current. You can use any ribbon that you have in your stock, stock stash. So once, this is the hardest part about videos is doing a bow while everybody's watching. <laughs> Oh, the dog's getting excited. Here comes my kids. Okay, apologize for the noise. All right, so here's our little bow. Almost cut my finger. And if I were finishing this up, I would put a little glue dot there and one on the back to kind of hold that in place. But that's our big one. And then our little one is the same thing. We just do one stem here. This is way too tall for this jar, so I'm going to cut this quite a bit here. Put it right in the center there. It's still too tall, I think. Okay, I want it to be about like like that, I think. So I'm going to cut another inch or so off. That's the nice part about starting too tall. You can always go shorter. Ugh, it's cute! I'm gonna tip it a little bit so that when I look at it from the front, I can see the flower. And let me find my glue dots. I'm going to take a glue dot and kind of put it on the stem here. And kind of shove that back in the hole. Hopefully that will keep it from moving around too much. I'm just gonna kind of push it against the top there and that will kind of hold it in place so now we've got a cute little flower vase and a salt shaker isn't that cute you could tie a sentiment on a tag and kind of dangle it with some ribbon I've done that before but you would probably tie a ribbon around this one here come the kids so I'm just gonna wrap this up but aren't those cute I just thought that was really fun and um, thanks for watching guys have a great day